Barbara was stood outside two uh, shops on Newgate Street that have got really uh, special memories for you. Uh, can you tell us why that is? Yes, absolutely. Um, my father started off in business in Morpeth in 1947, uh, just a little bit lower down Newgate Street in what is Café des Amis with uh, a jewellery shop. And round about 1958, he moved to these two shops here. Um, the bar shop was a jeweller's shop, Ross the Jewellers, and he was in business here up until 2008. And then we also took the coffee bar next door, which is now Fadeney. It was a coffee bar in the swinging 60s and it later became a gift boutique. And at the same time, my brother and I, the family, were living upstairs above the shop. It was our home here for about 11 years. Right, and uh, we're now at the back of Newgate Street and that orange building that you can see in the background is, uh, is where we used to live. That, that was our home. Um, it was really interesting to look back now because it was on the A1 and uh, we were sleeping up in attic bedrooms up there and at night time the whole of the building used to rattle when the lorries came up and down so it wasn't exactly a very peaceful environment in which to live but also this back alleyway uh, Fawcett's Yard was full of houses right from here uh, right up to Wellway and it was an old cobbled dirt track and what I've always found really you know, quite moving is at the time when new estates were being built in Morpeth, beautiful houses, you know, like Kirk Hill and, and the Grange, there were people who lived right here on our doorstep who actually, not only did they not have a toilet, but uh, an inside toilet, but they didn't even have running water. And as you can see, the remains of a standpipe over there and the people who lived in uh, Fawcett's yard, in my lifetime, I can remember them coming with pails, filling up pails of water to take back into the house. Just taking us back to uh, the, the business aspect of the street uh, for a moment, when you uh, uh, were here, what, what do you remember about other businesses uh, that you could perhaps see from, uh, fr from where you lived? Well, what I can remember is um, next door to us, I mean, as a child, we're always going to remember the sweetie shop and next door where it's now the hairdressers, um, it was Margaret Givens and it was sweetie shop and we used to go in there and spend our pocket money and um, she used to make the most beautiful little cakes as well. People were so friendly. I mean, Margaret Givens would take my brother Kevin and I, you know, into the, into the bakery and give us little treats. And then a little bit further up the street was, uh, uh, past Manchester Street was uh, May's Fruit Store. And of course it was Auntie May to us because in those days you didn't call uh, adults by their first name. It was considered to be discourteous. So it was Auntie May and she used to save um, little, um, the fruit boxes so that we could make beds for dolls and things uh, like in Blue Peter and then I remember that there was a grocer around the corner in Manchester Street and, and there were Simpsons and of course um, Talent Tires has been here you know for a very long time as well for many years Little Graham's a lovely little bakery and tobacconist just down uh, where the bridal shop is now and they were you know, absolutely lovely people and of course Mr Hardy and everybody remembered him and you know his kindliness towards children so it was it, you know, it was almost it was almost like living on a residential street. Well, it was a residential street because of all of the adults that you got to know. You know, who were so kind to you and looked after you. You wouldn't yes. be the uh, the the only children that were living above the shop then. Were there others that you remember? Yes, yes, there were. I mean, there were the state children, but you know. The state children were a little bit younger than us, so we didn't really play with them. Although um, Mr. State did have a garage here, just where you could see, so he was sort of a regular visitor in this yard. Uh, again, there were the Stoker children so, that we were aware of, uh, but my brother was great friends with uh, Jeff McCarthy um, and also Anthony White from White McCarthy. And Kevin and uh, Anthony are still, you know, good buddies t till this day. Now, uh, a lot of people will remember uh, Ross's Coffee Bar, which yes. was uh, one half of the shop during the 1960s. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, I mean, it was a fantastic place. It was a very big coffee bar. Um, if anybody knows the shop now, uh, Faye Denis, they'll know that it goes, it goes right the way back. Um, it was a definitely you know, part of the swinging 60s scene in Morpeth. We had a fantastic jukebox. There were loads of young people used to come in. 
um, was, had all the usual thing that you can remember of the day, you know, the Horlicks, uh, the frothy coffee, uh, the swirly oranges going round in the in the dispenser and we were really lucky to grow up then because um, Kevin and I used to be given all of the old 45s from the jukebox when they were finished with by the rep and that was I think where we sort of developed you know the love of music but it was a great place to live and uh, lots of people actually still remember it including some of the people who used to work in the coffee bar. A little bird tells me that uh, that you uh, worked there as well, is that right? Yes, absolutely. I mean, it was very much a family business. I mean, Kevin and I would be in, in our high chairs, literally in the shop when we were little, because um, my mother didn't have very many other options in terms of childcare. But yes, we were taught customer service from a very early age. The customer is always right. And we earned our pocket money uh, serving and working in the coffee bar as children. So do you think your, uh, your parents were, uh, were both um, very happy working in business in Morpeth? Yes, I think so. I think my mother loved it. I mean, my mother loved the glamour. So she was a very glamorous woman and she loved the glamour of, uh, of working in, in the shop amongst the, the beautiful jewellery. And my father enjoyed the freedom of, uh, I mean, he was, he was a very good watch repairer, but he enjoyed the freedom of in the afternoon working for himself and taking the dog out, you know, going up to Tranwell and having a long walk with the dog and then coming back and doing a few more repairs. So it was a great life for both of them. Yes, they loved it. And and, and finally, what do you think about uh, Newgate Street now, the way it's changed and how it is to, today? Well, I, I do think it's, it is sad that it isn't the vibrant place that it was, but I think the same can be said, you know, for many town centres. But it still has retained that sense of individuality with all of the small businesses. There, there's some wonderful people, you know, who work here, including some of the people who were still there in those days. So I think it's it's just a matter, really, of um, of people working together and and adapting to change circumstances and continuing to look to providing something which is different.